What is up guys? This is QRM from the Trinity of Lift and today I'm going to bring all of you guys my brilliant Trap Tricks Star Seraph deck for this November 2015 ban list. Now with how the format is shaping up and how Pendulum decks are basically set to dominate the entire scene along with a little bit of Cosmo, I really wanted to try and make an anti-meta deck and try and get my feet wet um, into the whole idea of making my opponent play slower and that's basically where this deck came in I decided to just try and get some level 4 anti-meta engines throw them together and make a deck out of it and I'm not gonna lie it's not bad I'm actually pretty darn happy with how this list turned out um, obviously because again I just threw ideas off the top of my head into a deck and then more made it made a couple of minor tweaks here and there and basically that's what this whole list is but uh, in my opinion I still think I did a pretty good job at making this deck because it's still pretty solid at what it tries to do in terms of trying to disrupt our opposing pendulum decks and whatnot so again without further ado I'm just gonna get right into the list and show you guys how I made this deck um, again this deck is more or less geared towards beating pendulum decks it doesn't have the greatest Cosmo matchup you can still win that matchup believe me but it's not the easiest. You're probably going to have to side more or less for Cosmos in games 2 and 3 than for Pendulum decks. Because again, you are maining quite a bit of Pendulum hate in the main deck already. So without further ado, let's just get right into the main deck. We're going to start off with 3 copies of Trap Tricks. Mermelio, Mer excuse me, Mermelio, if I can say it correctly. We have 3 Mermelio in here because this is by far the best turn 1 normal summon that you have in this deck. Simply because you can normal summon this, grab a Time Space Trap Hole and or a Bottomless, set it with any other of your back row. And either force your opponent to play around that Bottomless... Or pray that they have to have it out now or they're going to neg themselves really hard if they try and go through their plays. Again, because the, all the trap hole cards can really do a big number on any big pendulum summon. So again, Mermelio is just really, really strong. Also, the benefit um, of having her be able to destroy um, pendulum scales with her special summon effect is never a bad thing either. So again, we have to have three of her because she's probably the best normal summon in the deck. Moving on to the other trap tricks, we have two copies of Dianea because she's really strong into the, in the mid to late game. Simply because she's a rank, um, excuse me, a one card rank four. If you already have the Mermelio engrave, as well as if you ever special summon her off of maybe Call of the Haunted, she also can apply that same pressure that Mermelio can. Simply because you can set any of your trap cards in your grave already straight to your back row, which again is really strong and really good at applying that big pressure to your opponent so that they don't make those big plays that they might have in mind. So yeah, that'll be it for the whole trap tricks engine of the deck. Moving on to the Star Serum engine we have three copies of the star seraph sovereignty and then of course the three copies of the star seraph scepter now the reason why i wanted to include these guys in here is because i wanted to have another good rank four engine that's more offensively capable rather than more defensively oriented like how the trap tricks are so i really felt that the star Seraphs were just a very good fit in this deck because of how we have a lot of cards to try and make this engine consistent and basically if you can ever resolve the engine um one time you should be able to win because of how um, how much advantage it can accumulate for you so again we have these stars um star seraphs in here for that big big offensive plays that they can bring then moving on we have a performage aspect to this deck to help us support our brilliant fusions we have the three copies of the damage juggler then we have the two copies of the hat tricker and then finally we have the one copy of the trick clown now we have the three damage juggler in here simply because wavering eyes is a card as well as a lot of the decks can otk you on a blink of an eye so we have the damage juggler in here to prevent those otks as well as that wavering eyes obviously then we also have the two copies of the hat tricker in here because we can spam the board with multiple level fours very fast and very often so i really felt the hat tricker was a lot more consistent in this deck so i felt comfortable running multiples of it and then of course we have the one trick cloud in here to help us send stuff off of brilliant fusion so that we can instantly to get another level 4 onto the board to make either Trapeze Magician or any other rank 4 that we might need. So yeah, that will be it for the performance aspect of our deck. And then moving on to the final couple of level 4s that we got. We have one copy of Gem Knight Garnet because we need this for the Brilliant Fusion. We have the one copy of the Thunder King Ryo because if we're trying to make a, uh, um, excuse me, an anti-meta deck, we really need to have this in here because obviously this is probably the best level 4 anti-meta monster we have. And then for the final monster that isn't actually a level 4, we're running one copy of Glow Bulb because this and either any of the trap tricks, your Gem Light Garnet or your Performance Hat Tricker makes Nat Beast. And Nat Beast turn 1 is probably the best darn turn 1 that any deck can possibly make nowadays because, again, of how much Pendulum decks there are. So, again, I wanted to have a way in this deck to make the Naturia Beast, so that is why I also included the Glow Bulb in here. So, yeah, that will run us off of all our monsters. Moving on to our spells. We start off with three copies of the Insta Fusion because again this is a level four deck at its core, so we have to have the Insta Fusion in here to get our one card rank four monsters out. 
Then we also have two copies of the Brilliant Fusion in here again because we really want to have more ways to dump our performances into the grave and get the Seraphonite on board to abuse its double normal summon. Now, I couldn't include three of this and two, um, two Gem Knights simply because of space constraints, so that is why I decided to thin down the Brilliant Engine a little bit, which is why I only got the two Brilliant Fusions in here. Then, moving on, we have two... Um, I guess you could say glow bulb enablers. We have the one for one and the foolish burial. Simply again in here to help you try and get that glow bulb turn one and to make the Nat Cheerio Beast play a little bit more consistent. Um, foolish burial also has the added benefit of being able to foolish any other performance. So if you already seen the glow bulb or you don't or you don't necessarily want to grab the glow bulb, you can use foolish burial for any of your other performances to get their effects. And one for one is kind of the same idea where you can use one for one to help you unclog hands if you maybe draw multiple uh, multiple performances as well to help you get the glow bulb again faster so again we have these guys in here to help us enable our naturia beast a little bit more and then finally for the last couple of spells we have the three copies of the upstar goblin because i like my 37 card consistency and of course i have the one copy of rageki because board clear so that will round us off of all our spells. Moving on to our trap cards. We have three copies of Call of the Haunted because we really want to have multiple ways to summon past the normal summon. So again, Call of the Haunted is just really good at helping us spam the board with multiple level fours. It also helps us keep our Star Surf engine a little bit more consistent. Then for all of the trap hole cards we do run, we have two copies of the Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare. We have the one copy of Time Space and the one Bottomless. Again, these are all here to help us get armor melio searches and whatnot. And... In an ideal list, I probably would be running two copies of Time Space Trap Hole, but I do not currently have two copies of it. So that is why I am running the two copies of Trap Trick Trap Hole instead. But again, if you guys have multiple Time Space Trap Holes, I definitely would recommend running two of that and one Trap Trick Trap Hole Nightmare. So that will do it for all of our bottomless and or other Trap Hole cards. And then finally, for the last two traps that we are running, we have one copy of Emptiness and one copy of Solemn Warning because these are the, these are the other really solid traps nowadays in this format. So again, we have to have these two again in here to round us off. So that will be it for the entire 40 card main deck. Moving on to the extra deck. We're going to start off with all of the Star Seraph rank 4s. We have the one copy of Evil Swarm Ouroboros, the one copy of Stellar Knight Delta Rose, the one copy of Stellar Knight Ptolemyus, which is actually now $30 now, which is pretty funny. And then of course we have the one copy of Constellar Pleiades to round us off of all of our Star Seraph lineup. Again, these are all here just for the Star Seraph engine. And they're all really strong in their own very cool applications. So we have all of these guys. Then moving on to the other cards, just for the other generic rank fours, we have one copy of Castell because this is good spot removal. We have one copy of Auto Arc to help us get over other monsters, and this plus emptiness is really good too. We have the one copy of Digusto Emerald, which I actually got in dual terminal ultra rare, which is so pretty. We have this in here again to help us recycle some of our choice monsters, like some of the Star Seraphs, as well as our Gem Knight Garnet if we ever use Buried Fusion, so that we can use the Buried Fusion twice. We have the one copy of Diamond Dire just to get another um, good rank four for spot removal. We have the one copy of Abyss Dweller for any of those graveyard decks. We have one copy of Gagaga Cowboy because stealing games is fun. And of course, for the final rank four, we have the one copy of Performance Trapeze Magician because we are running a few choice spellcasters in this deck. So again, having the Trapeze Magician in here to enable OTKs is never bad. So that'll be it for all of the XZ's monsters in our deck. Moving on, we have the one copy of Naturia Beast again, like I said, because making this turn one is really good. So again, we have to have the Nat Beast in our extra deck. And then finally, for the last couple of monsters, our fusions of the extra deck, we have two copies of Elder Entity Norden because we need this for instant fusion. And then, of course, finally, the one copy of Gem Knight Seraphonite to support our brilliant fusions. So that'll be it, guys, for my brilliant Trap Trick Star Seraph deck for this November 2015 format. I hope you all did enjoy this deck. And again, I am going to try and probably tweak this deck a little bit more um, in the coming months when we get the Breakers of Shadow set coming out. As again, I really feel that making anti-meta decks can be another fun aspect of this game that we can play. Simply because also I made this deck because I was also getting slightly bored of some of the other, um, I guess you could say, the other Madolchi variants that I've been trying to play a lot recently. So again... That's why I made this deck. And again, I'm really having a lot of fun with it. So yeah, without further ado, I hope you all did very much enjoy this video. And as always, this is QRM from the Trinity of Lyft. And I'll see all of you guys later. Peace out.